me. I don't want to preach to others and be a castaway. I don't want to come to church and die and go to hell. I want to be holy. I want to be right. Jump on your feet and shout hallelujah. You got to humble yourself. Look at somebody shout humble yourself. Why y'all ain't shouting? Come on. Look at somebody say, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. That old spirit of pride. It's a sneaky spirit. It's a conniving spirit. Pride. Proverbs 6, 16 declares. 16 does the Lord hate. 7 are an abomination. He said he hates a proud look. That just kills 75% of all preachers. You come to church and look proud. You don't shout till you got the mic. You don't praise God till you got the mic. The mic. I'm sick of you preachers that don't praise God unless you got the mic. When is the last time your church seen you dance? When is the last time your church seen you praise God? This old spirit of arrogance that is creeping across the body of Christ. He hates a proud look. God spoke to me one day. He said, son, pride is like a stealth jet. I said, what do you mean? He said, it's like a stealth jet. Well, I'm a church, but I don't know what no stealth jet is. It's a military term. It's a warfare term. That if, if, if they get ready to come in, if they go stealth, that means it can't be detected by the radar. That's what pride does. It sneaks in your life and you don't even recognize it's there. Pride is that spirit that got you where can't nobody tell you nothing. Pride is that spirit that got you where you can't submit to authority. Pride is that spirit when you sit up here getting mad. Who we talking to? I'm talking to you with your proud self. Pride is that spirit that got you when somebody tell you something. You catching an attitude. Ain't no need to get an attitude. If you're a real child of God, you don't get mad when you hear a word like this. You're going to search in your heart. You're going to say, God, get pride out of me. Get this mess out of me. There was a man in the Bible by the name of Lucifer. You remember him. God told me, he said, pride is the only spirit that can stand in my presence. We saw it happen in Lucifer. He stood right there in the presence of God. Proud to let you preach. Proud to let you prophesy. Proud to let you sing on the praise team. Proud to let you sing in the choir. That's what pride to do. And some of you don't recognize that pride is that spirit that got you that you can't even get up. You won't even pray. You don't even seek God. You don't call on him. You want to know why? Because you think you don't need God. Some of you in here. When is the last time you got on your face and got on the altar and told God to make you over again? Pride is that spirit that won't let you pray. But there's about 500 people in here today that are saying, man of God, I hear God and whatever's in me that ain't like God, I gotta get it out of me tonight. Cause God resists the proud, but he give grace to the humble. Shake three people and say, yourself, humble yourself, humble yourself. This ain't my message. Sit up. My people, call by my name. Sit up, somebody say humble yourself. You ain't say that with power. Come on, say humble yourself. yourself. That's what God is saying to America. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Proverbs 8 13 say the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance. Humble yourself. Preachers, humble yourself. Huh? Act like you can't open the door for yourself. Why y'all ain't shout no more? Humble yourself. Then he said, when you get done humbling yourself, I need you to get a prayer life. The 
sad thing about church. We're so good at doing church. And most of us in here today, you don't have to tell me, I just know. Most of us in here tonight didn't pray for one hour. And he said to the disciples, could not you wait with me? But for one hour. But we sit home and watch TV. Y'all quiet. We stay on social media. Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And the enemy is slowly pulling us away. From the presence of God. Lord said to me one time. He said son the enemy is doing the church. You may have heard me say it before. Like an amphibian. I said, Lord, what in the world is that? You know, a frog is an amphibian. It can adjust to any temperature. I said, okay, what that mean? He said, if you want to cook a frog, if you put him in hot boiling water, he'll jump out. But if you put him in the water cold and slowly turn up the heat, because he can adjust to the temperature, he's being cooked and he don't know it. I said, well, what that got to do with us? He said, that's what the devil did to you. Things that used to bother you don't bother you no more. When you first got saved, if, if it was too much cussing, you turn it off. Oh, y'all quiet in here, yeah. You turn on the TV, they were cussing too much, you turn it off. If it was too much flesh, you turn it off. If you was in a room with people that were sitting up gossiping and backbiting, you get up out of the room. But now, you sit in there, talk with them, watching their thing on television. They use profanity and curse. It don't bother you no more. Because slowly, you're becoming numb to what you used to hate. It's because you've lost your prayer life. You've lost your dedication. I heard a preacher on television just the other day. He said uh, he was preaching this grace message. You know, they preaching this big grace message now. And I ain't trying to bother nobody. Do whatever you believe Lord told you to do. But he was preaching this grace message. Uh, and he got on television. Uh, and he said, uh, you ain't got to pray no more. He said, Jesus prayed for you. I said, the devil is a liar. Luke 18 declares, uh, men are always to pray and to faint not. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 declares, pray without ceasing. He didn't say if you pray, he said, but when you pray, you know what's wrong with us? You want to know why you got mess in your life? Because you don't pray. He said, pray lest you enter into temptation. I can tell people who spend time with God, I can tell in your life, I can tell the way you live. Because when you spend time with him, and you have fellowship with him, and you commune with him, your desire is to always do those things that please the Father. But some of you in here today, you don't pray, you don't fast. God spoke to me the other day. He said, son, if Jesus had to pray, who was perfect, who did no sin, who never did no evil, if he had to pray, how much more you got to pray? You want to know why I pray? I was talking to somebody, and they said, you act like you holy. You praying all the time like you holy. I said, I'm not praying because I'm holy. I'm praying because I got stuff in my life that I need God to break up off of me. I'm praying because I got demons on my back. I'm praying because there's a war going on in my members. When I would do good, evil is always present. I'm praying because I got mess in my life that if I don't pray, I got demons from my daddy and demons from my grandfather. Generational curses that the devil wants to to bring upon my life but if I pray I can beat the devil I got to pray shake your neighbor and say I gotta pray shake somebody real hard come on shake them real come on don't play with it shake them shake them I don't care if they get mad at you shake them anyway and tell them it's praying time it's praying time it's time to turn off the TV it's time to turn off your phone and it's time to seek God like you never saw them before. Missouri ain't seen nothing. New York City ain't seen nothing. I don't care what nobody say. It's the wrath of God coming upon the children of disobedience but if my people which are called by my name humble yourself pray, seek my face and turn from your wicked ways I need 
you to pray. You got to pray. Because the devil is after your children. You got to pray. Because there are demons after your family. You got to pray. Because there's spirits that's been assigned to your house. And unless you pray, you can't keep the devil back. You got to pray. Because there are demons assigned to your ministry. Let me tell you something. If you can't find nothing else to pray for, every morning I wake up, I rebuke the wandering of my mind. I pray that my mind don't leave me. Come on, don't act like your mind don't walk away from you. You can run down the street and forget where you're going. You can pick up the phone and forget who you're about to call. But Isaiah 26 said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. If you keep your mind stayed on me, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. I got to pray. I got to pray so that I don't enter into temptation. I got to pray because there's a war going on in my memory. I got to seek the face of God because I told God the only way I'm going to be like you is I got to spend time with you. I got to have fellowship. I got to have communion. Some of you in here, you wonder why you backbiting and bitter. You wonder why. You want to know why? Because you don't pray. He said, pray lest you enter into temptation. See, prayer is intimacy with God. But there's a law in the spirit that if you don't talk to God, you automatically begin to talk to the devil so the reason you bitter and the reason you backbiter and the reason you full of mass malice is because you've been talking to the devil and that's what the devil is but God's getting ready to raise up a people that are saying listen here I'll cut off whoever I got to cut off I'll let go whoever I got to let go but the next time you see me I'm about to walk in a realm with God I never walked in I'm about to get so full of power that when I walk in a room, my shadow is going to cause demons to tremble. Go to I feel deliverance in here. I'm about to walk in such an anointing that my spirit is going to be anointed. If you're hungry for his presence, if you want his glory, if you want God to restore your prayer life, jump on your feet and show glory. Genesis 1, right? Go there. Now again, if a man is a prophet, he dances to the beat of a different drama. He says things that don't make sense. When he says it, it looks like a lie until it comes to pass. Matter of fact, I want to give you a revelation today and look at somebody and say, truth Come on, say it for power. Say true. Before time seems like a lie. Truth before time seems like a lie. Now remember, truth operates in eternity. Truth is not bound by time. Okay, what do you mean? Isaiah prophesies and says, and Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 a virgin shall conceive a son now they already think he's crazy because he walk around talking about a virgin going to have a baby they say something wrong with that man then around the 22nd 23rd chapter God tells Isaiah walk around the city naked for two years I'm in a book church as a sign to the Egyptians that he was going to strip them naked. Now, they already think he crazy because he said a virgin going to have a baby. Now they really think he crazy because he walking around naked talking about God told them to do it. <laughs> so at the time, what he said seemed like a lie. Because for years, that word never came to pass. But one day, time caught up with truth. 
Are, are you with that? So when a prophet or a man of God speaks something over your life, when he says it, it seems like a lie. I lay hands on you and prophesy and declare, thus says the Lord, your son going to be a preacher. But your son in jail right now. And I said, your son is a preacher. He's a man of God preaching all over the world. And you look at me and say, hey, you missed it, brother. My son in jail, he must have a jail ministry, but it sure lay around the world. What I said seems like a lie. But sooner or later, time is going to catch up with the truth. If you're with me, say I'm with you. So Genesis 126 says something real profound. And if you give me about 15 minutes, I'm going to get to my point. There's a glory going to hit this place tonight. Somebody shout undeniable glory. So I'm going to speed through this quick. But Genesis 126 says something profound. And God said, let us make man in our own image. After our likeness. That's what your Bible say? Yes. Let them have what? Dominion. Over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, the cattle of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the face of the earth. That's what your Bible say? Yes. Okay. Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man in our own image. That's verse 26. Verse 27 declares, so God created man in his own image. You got that? All right, look at me. God talking. God say, hey, let's make a man. And let's make him look like me. Verse 26. 27, after he says it, he does it. The man is created. Go to Genesis chapter 2. I'm going somewhere. Somebody in here, I promise you, after tonight, your steering wheel is going to turn into your altar. While you riding in your car, the Holy Ghost is going to begin to visit you. Somebody by Hashatala Mahosaya. Some of you are going to try to go to bed and the Holy Ghost is going to pull you to the side of your bedroom. How, ain't, no, ain't, ain't, ain't nothing like trying to mind your own business and the Holy Ghost tell you come spend time with me. That's some good stuff, ain't it? Oh, that's some good stuff. 126 say, let us make man. Verse 27, he created the man. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Hold on. 26, let's make a man. 27, he created the man. Genesis 2 and 7, he forms a man. Hold on. 26, let's make a man. 27, he creates the man. The man now. Genesis 2 and 7. He forms a man. Now, some theologians suggest that chapter 2 is an overview or a slowing down of Genesis 1. But let me give you my view. If he said, let us make man in our own image, that means... Me. I don't want to preach to others and be a castaway. I don't want to come to church and die and go to hell. I want to be holy. I want to be right. Jump on your feet and shout hallelujah. You got to humble yourself. Look at somebody shout humble yourself. Why y'all ain't shouting? Come on. Look at somebody and say, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. That old spirit of pride. It's a sneaky spirit. It's a conniving spirit. Pride. Proverbs 6, 16 declares. 16 does the Lord hate. 7 are an abomination. He said he hates a proud look. That just kills 75% of all preachers. You come to church and look proud. You don't 
shout till you got the mic. You don't praise God till you got the mic. I'm sick of you preachers that don't praise God unless you got the mic. When is the last time your church seen you dance? When is the last time your church seen you praise God? This old spirit of arrogance that is creeping across the body of Christ. He hates a proud look. God spoke to me one day. He said, so I got you a king. Nobody tell you nothing. Pride is that spirit that got you where you can't submit to authority. Pride is that spirit when you sit up here getting mad. Who we talking to? I'm talking to you with your proud self. Pride is that spirit that got you when somebody tell you something. You catching the attitude. Ain't no need to get the attitude. If you're a real child of God, you don't get mad when you hear a word like this. And pride is like a stealth jet. I say, what do you mean? He said, it's like a stealth jet. Well, I'm a church, but I don't know what no stealth jet is. It's a military term. It's a warfare term. That if, if, if they get ready to come in, if they go stealth, that means it can't be detected by the radar. That's what pride does. It sneaks in your life, and you don't even recognize it's there. Pride is that spirit. That